Okay, this is Daytona week, so I thought I'd do a vlog on the hype surrounding the Budweiser Duels, the 250 mile qualifying races. Now, Daytona has the most unusual qualifying system in any of racing, and frankly, the dumbest, in my opinion. Again, disclaimer, this is all my opinion. But the Daytona 500, on qualifying pole day, only the front rows locked in which happened to be Danica Patrick and of course anybody can hold it wide open a lap I'm sure Stuart Haas gave her the best motor and Jeff Gordon both Hendrick motored cars well that's all well and good but during the first race and for a change I was able to watch them live on Speed Channel they made the remark that Dale Earnhardt Jr. was not locked in the field now he had the 11th fastest time and the provisionals are based on last year's owner points. Now, I just looked on Jayski, www.jayski.com. I think I'll put the link to the starting lineup in the description. But the speed that made it in on the four they take by speed, because they, the pole two, then the front 15 out of the qualifying races, or front 16 if the pole winner happens to be in that front 15 out of each qualifying race. The first race lines up the inside row, the second race lines up the outside row. Now, of course, uh, Kevin Harvick, maybe disproving my lame duck driver vlog, wins the first qualifying race in a stat children's car. And Kyle Busch, after a penalty on Jeff Gordon, wins the second one. I don't think he had anything for Gordon, but that's beside the point. But so getting back to Dale Earnhardt Jr. saying he might not make the race. The 16th pass of speed was the last speed locked in on, on speed. Now, when you go back to last year's owner points for provisionals, the last one locked in on a provisional was 39th. Do they seriously think that, and frankly, if one of the big dollar teams like that would be in 44th or 45th, not be first or second alternate, they would probably buy their way in anyway. It's been done before. It'll probably be done again. Just go give somebody don't have a sponsor more money they been making the Daytona 500 to load up and go home and withdraw but it wasn't going to happen it became obvious after the first race that Brian Keselowski Brad's older brother was not going to make the race and then in the second race once Mike Bliss had his problem with the Wendell net it became a mute point so it's just to the point that Speed tried to hype it Dale Jr. could miss the race and even last week, Kyle Busch was doing commentary on the ARCA race. And he was saying, we're not guaranteed in. Dale Jr. is not guaranteed in. Give me a break. Do they really think we believe that with only 45 cars there? Now, it's a screwball qualifying system and, frankly, a danger system. During the qualifying races, off the top of my head, and this is since 1970, three drivers have actually been killed in the qualifying races. One was a raw rookie named Tab Prince in 1970. One was a veteran independent, considered a pretty fair driver, but never had the equipment to run up front, Raymond Friday Hassler in 72. And then in the late 70s, or maybe 1980, I'm not sure on the year, Ricky Knotts, who had run around the Midwest in the ASA, I'd watched him run places like Salem, Indiana, tried to make it, and he was unfortunately killed in one of the qualifying races. So. And you think back, drivers have been hurt in them. They tear up cars. Um, Trevor Bain, the third fastest qualifying car, got tore up in the qualifying race. Carl Edwards tore up about his fourth car in the between testing and the sprint showdown or whatever they call it this year. The pole winner's race, let's just call it that. Got tore up. And it's just, it's not worth it. Now, the way it worked out, and this is not bad, the fastest 43 cars are starting the race. Now, I've heard some talk about um, 
if um you know just let's go have the fastest 43 start each race well frankly i believe that's going to become a mute point because i believe or and i still believe this there will be some races this year the biggest race of the year that you're guaranteed a quarter million dollars to start the race only gets 45 cars wait till they go to phoenix next week i think it's phoenix next week they may not have 43 cars show up or they may have just 43 cars but we'll see what happens but I say scrap the qualifying races. They announced next year they're going to run them at night. That's a bad idea, frankly, because um, they run the Daytona 500 in the daytime. And the qualifying races are considered a test session for the Daytona 500. And frankly, I've been to Florida in February. I've been to one Daytona 500. And it's not that warm down there at night. I just, I just think it's a bad idea. If you're going to take a week to go down there, you're going to be down there Thursday afternoon anyway if you're going to go on Thursday. I know I would be, although I didn't go till actually go to the track till Saturday. I was on a charter tour when I went. We went to the Bush race and Nationwide Insurance, if you're watching, this is 2000. It was Bush then, so don't hate on me for that. But I say scrap the qualifying races. Go back to qualifying. I've heard people say getting back to lock in the fastest 43. No, but how fair would that be? Let's say the point, points later. It don't matter if it's Jimmy Johnson, Brad Keselowski, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, let's say they go on their first qualifying lap and blow an engine. That mean they go home? No. That's why they have provisionals. Provisionals are needed, but... I really don't look for any of the high dollar teams to miss any races this year unless it would be Danica Patrick. And they'd probably buy their way in, but frankly, I don't think that's going to happen anyway because about, I'd say, 80% of the races won't have full fields. But my opinion is let's just scrap the qualifying races at Daytona. They're a moneymaker for, for the track. Of course, Budweiser sponsors them, but my opinion comment like dislike you know if you don't like what i'm saying tell me why yeah they're they're fun races to watch i'm not arguing that but i just think we could do away with them that's been my take